<laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm Jeremy Strick, director of the Nasher Sculpture Center, and it is my pleasure to be here today to welcome you to the Nasher Prize Dialogues Laureate Lecture. Nasher Prize Dialogues is a series of conversations that take place in Dallas and across the world. Each year, one of these occasions is devoted to our Nasher Prize Laureate, artists who we honor for their profound contributions to contemporary sculpture selected by an esteemed jury of museum directors, curators, artists, and art historians. Today, we are fortunate to hear from both our 2023 National Prize Laureate, Senga Nanguti, as well as curator, <laughs> as well as curator, filmmaker, entrepreneur, and activist, Linda Goodbryant. But, but before I introduce today's speakers, I'd first like to recognize some of the generous people who have made the Nasher Prize and today's program possible. Thank you to our 2023 Nasher Prize presenting sponsors, the Eugene McDermott Foundation and Nancy A. Nasher and David J. Hemeseger. Mary, Grace, Nancy, David, thank you. And our education and community program sponsors, the Donna Wilhelm Family Fund, Joanne Leonhardt Casulo, and the Dorothea L. Leonhardt Foundation, and Patricia J. Villarreal, and Thomas S. Leatherbury. Today's program owes special thanks to the sponsors of the 2023 Nasher Prize Dialogues, the Bowden Family Foundation, Michael Corman and Kevin Fink, Gagosian, and Janelle and Alden Pinnell and the Pinnell Foundation, as well as the sponsors of the Nasher Prize Dialogues Graduate Symposium, Lisa Dawson and Thomas Marstead, Lucilo Pena and Lee Cobb, and Greenberg Traurig. The Graduate Symposium took place virtually this past January, and we are delighted to have many of those participating students with us here today. We invite everyone here to join us in celebrating the compendium of their essays immediately upstairs after this program. And thanks to our wine sponsors, the Green Family Art Foundation, that celebration includes a drink. <laughs> Senga Nagudi, was born in 1943 in Chicago and lives in Colorado Springs. Her work has been the subject of solo exhibitions organized by the Henry Moore Institute, the Baltimore Museum of Art, Art and Practice Los Angeles, the Institute of Contemporary Art Miami, and the Contemporary Arts Center New Orleans. Her recent retrospective, Topologies, originated at the Lenbach House Munich in 2019 and traveled to the Denver Art Museum, Museo de Arte de Sao Paulo, Brazil, and the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Her work has been prominently featured in international biennials, including the 57th Venice Biennale and the 54th Carnegie International. This spring, she opened a long-term exhibition at Dia Beacon. Nanguti was elected as a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2020 and has been a recipient of the Denver Art Museum Key Award in 2019, Women's Caucus for Art Lifetime Achievement Award in 2010, and the Anonymous Was a Woman Award in 2005. Her works are held in institutional collections, including the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, Studio Museum in Harlem, the Brooklyn Museum, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, the Hammer Museum, the Carnegie Museum of Art, Musée National d'Art Moderne, Centre Georges Pompidou, Tate Modern, Jerusalem Museum of Art, and Dia Beacon. 
Linda Good Bryant is an artist, filmmaker, and founder and president of Project Eats, a living installation transforming vacant lots and rooftops into neighborhood-based farms, catalyzing creativity and cultivating greater food sovereignty across New York City. She is also the founder of Just Above Midtown Gallery, a self-described laboratory that foregrounded the work of African-American artists between 1974 and 1986. She won a Peabody Award for the film Flag Wars, produced in 2003, and in 2020, she was a recipient of an Anonymous Was a Woman Award and a United States Artists Beresford Prize. She is a former Guggenheim Fellow. In 2021, Good Bryant created the installation Are We Really That Different? in collaboration with architect Elizabeth Diller for the exhibition Social Works at Kagosian Gallery. In 2022, she was lead faculty for Raw Material Academy Session 9 and Exhibition in collaboration with the Institute of Contemporary Art in Philadelphia. She collaborated in the organization of the highly acclaimed Just Above Midtown Changing Spaces exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York from October 22 to February of this year. Sengen Ngudi's work with movement and material has emphatically employed collaboration, calling on a cast of friends to explore and realize ideas together. In the 1970s, this ethos found a home in Linda Good Bryant's gallery, just above Midtown, which was radically challenging art world norms and expectations, giving artists of color unprecedented creative control. Today, Sengen Ngudi and Linda Good Bryant will reflect on the role of collaboration in Sengen Ngudi's work and the influence her relationships have had on her practice. Please join me in welcoming Sengen Ngudi and Linda Good Bryant. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> How do you want to start? I want to start by saying I am no techno person because I can't even turn off this phone so properly. So why don't I... Uh, <laughs> but, what, you want to... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let, I'm going to start by just saying that Sangha and I are best in improvisation. So just <laughs> buckle up <laughs> and enjoy the ride. <laughs> so um, collaboration. It's something that uh, both of us have always been interested in. Do you want to share how that happened with you? Well, I would say first, uh, do most of you feel as though you're collaborators in your lives? You have a, a circle of people around you that support you, that you support, that energizes everything you do and allows things to happen. And that's really what's been going on with us for a number of years now. <laughs> <laughs> a number of years. That's for mm -hmm. sure. So let's, let's, let's open it up to you all. For those of you who nodded that you have mm -hmm. experienced collaboration in your lives, what would you say is one of the key benefits of collaboration? Yeah. Communication. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can do more. Hmm? Share ideas. And with the sharing of those ideas, uh, everybody starts expanding. You're not in your single lane. There's all of this energy and, and, and thoughts that are coming in that allow you to expand. And that's really why we're excited about collaboration, because it allows us to expand and um, get charged up, our enthusiasm you know, extends itself out into so many other areas. Yeah. So we're not confined to our, 
you know, our singular talent, so to speak. Uh, an artist or a dancer or a musician, all of a sudden we're working together to make this kind of like concert happen. Yeah. That's a great word for it. Mm -hmm. I had the, the good fortune of uh, spending a couple of days at Skowhegan uh, last spring, <clears throat> and it was the first time I had been up there. Um, and there was one artist that I met uh, in a studio visit that at some point said, uh, I think I'm harming myself. Mm. And, uh, and I said, well, do you want to talk about that? And, and he did. And one of the things that came out of the conversation was that there wasn't a sense of community among artists today that they often are just in isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, and collaboration breaks all that down. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought about just how collaborative we've always worked, uh, mm -hmm. you and, and me, mm -hmm. but also hundreds of other artists, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and was really trying to understand what's happened to us now at this time, some 15 years later mm -hmm. uh, after, after JAM. Um, that is causing people to be isolated. Um, and one of the challenges that they face, and this, and this young man said it very clearly, is that you can't really get honest feedback on your work. And collaboration makes that possible. So I want to add that to being an asset of collaborating. Uh, collaborators, for the most part, are honest with one another. And we so grow from that and not the other. And, and I think the key word there is grow. We all want to grow. We all want to be um, larger than ourselves, in a sense, or go beyond ourselves to see what that looks like. And that allows that to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go back? <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. Side by side, you and, mm -hmm. you and Maren. Maren, is Maren yeah. here yet? <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's not okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is an early piece. Where do you see it? But you're gonna. Where do they, they see, see it? it over here? Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a, a collaborator of ours, uh, Franklin Parker. Okay. You want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, this was one of our first collaborations. This is called Kiss, and the concept behind this is uh, first loving yourself, and then others can uh, love you as well. This is a performance that Marin Hassinger and I did together. Uh, it was a residency uh, up in Maine, uh, Kippy's camp, ASAP camp. And this was uh, some gravel that was uh, on the side of uh, uh, the house, uh, the resident house that we were at. And so we decided to do a gravel dance and create uh, drawings with the water hose. Can you, can you, uh, how did that all happen? What do you mean? How did it, how did you get the idea to do this hose water dance? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, well, we were just trying to figure out things to do and it was there. And so <laughs> we said, well, let's do a great uh, gravel dance. Okay, <laughs> you take the hose, I have the shoes, we'll just gravel along, yeah. <laughs> It was fun. Yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. so key. Okay, this is a piece that I did uh, under the freeway. It's called Freeway Fets. 
And uh, this is, uh, these are all of our collaborators. All of these people were basically uh, artists. And uh, so they took on the role, a new role for themselves as uh, musicians to accompany us. Uh, that's Marin Hassinger on, on the right, uh, extreme right, Parker's uh, on the floor there. You just saw him in Kiss. Uh, David Hammonds is uh, on the left there. So we took different roles, which is what collaboration helps you to do. It helps you to uh, do something other than what you're known for. <laughs> That's myself uh, in the tarp on the right, and David uh, Hammonds is on the left there. And we did kind of, <laughs> we did kind of, oh, <laughs> I thought there was a cheer for David, but it was really the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just making her comment. <laughs> hey, David always inspires babies to make noise. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I had to uh, do a ceremony. That had to. Wanted to do a ceremony um, for uh, this piece that I installed. And I really wanted to kind of christen it and christen the ga uh, grounds that it was on. And so uh, I came up with this kind of loose ritual. And uh, we all participated. And it was very exciting, very exciting, because I had a mask at the time. These are some of the stills from that. And I found when I put the mask on, something else happened. I was free to go beyond again beyond myself Oops. and and allow uh, whatever happened to happen. I was taken away somehow with uh, the whole moment. Actually, we all were. Wow. Was that the first time you uh, had put on a mask? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, to perform it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and, and it had its own way, so that was great. It's kind of hard to see the mask. It looks like, I know. how was it made? It's nylon. It's, it's, okay. it's nylons, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is uh, at uh, Barnstall in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, on the left is Ulysses. In the middle is myself. Uh, uh, on my other side is uh, Parker and then Marin. And we all had different ideas for this performance. And Marin's idea was to wear all white and then uh, have images projected on our bodies. So that's that. Mm -hmm. And these are stills from that, uh, that uh, collaboration. And Marin and I are on the wall there. We were climbing on the wall. And then we leaped off and started crawling, and it was all really exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> just thinking about it, just the memory of how thrilling it is to uh, work with someone, work with a body of people, work with a family. So how much of, of let's take this, this, this piece, mm -hmm. how much of it was uh, improv? Mm -hmm. And how much of it was there, where there was mm -hmm. direction? It was very loose. Um, we had the main thing is that each one of us contributed an idea, and after we contributed that idea, then we went from there, loosely knowing where we're going to be. But uh, basically, uh, it was improv. Mm -hmm. And this is at just above Midtown Gallery. This is Butch Morris and uh, Cheryl Banks. Cheryl Banks was a dancer that danced with Sun Ra originally. And, um, you know, it's just wonderful. The piece in the back is a piece that I exhibited at just above Midtown that they then played off of, and oh, we all three played off of. So you know, uh, uh, mentioning Butch, mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's really it would be just great to mention that he had developed this process mm -hmm. for conducting large right. groups of musicians, right. which he called conduction. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was pretty remarkable about conduction, and the way he was able to do it, is that he had these uh, signals, these hand signals, mm -hmm. and so if he gave, you know. 
this musician or this group of musicians over here, this signal, and then you another signal, another signal. Mm -hmm. And this thing would improvisationally be created. And one of the things that was wonderful about that is that you could never do it the same way. Right. And I now want to go back to what you were talking about before we show a bit of apropos. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, is it possible in what you described mm -hmm. um, for it to be repeated, or is it always different? It's always different. Yeah. The structure can be repeated, but the actual actuality of it uh, is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what, do you, what do you like about that? And are there times when that's frustrating that you can't do it again? Uh, it really is never frustrating because it's always new, and that, that's the point of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The newness of it. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and that was a breathing exercise. And this was all the same collaboration, myself, uh, Butch and Cheryl, different segments of it. This is bulimia. This is a. Uh, oh, but. Uh, you want me to play it? Sure, but I think they chose the wrong one again, but. No. Yeah. Tell okay, me, Dr. Good. Fuki, I've never heard of your country. Um, what is the name of your country again? Well, the name of the country is uh, bulimia. I see. Actually, it's a state. It's more like a state of mind rather than a country. A chosen few people uh, live and exist in the state of bulimia, and uh, bulimia exists in the state of them. Now, can even though it's a chosen few, can anyone become a citizen of bulimia? I think that anyone can work toward being a citizen, but uh, not anyone can be a citizen, no, mm -hmm. no. Well, what does it take to become a citizen of Bolivia? It, it just takes oneness. When you become one and aware with the citizens of the state, mm -hmm. then you, you get closer to it. Mm. You see? Well, can you tell me how one becomes one with oneness? Well, I think that uh, you start out with... You start by approaching a certain spiritual awareness that... Uh, that we all hold in the state. Mm. The, the magistrates of the state all hold a certain spiritual awareness. And I think that you start down that road of thinking. You think like the aristocrats of the state, you know? Mm. And slowly oneness becomes whole with the person that is uh, attempting to become one. Uh. This was something that we created, a number of us. Uh, actually, the actual concept was uh, created by Charles Abramson. And uh, we developed this place called Bulimia. And when we first developed it, uh, people uh, confused it with the, the food issue. Uh, and it wasn't that at all. Uh, we created this, this other way of thinking. And we were all involved with it. I encourage you, because it's something that's quite involved, that you uh, maybe go online and get a chance to you know, really get an idea of it. It's kind of complicated, so I won't go into it here. And it has lots of humor. Yeah, it has lots of humor. <laughs> like uh, the dictionary, Oh, right. <laughs> which is our form of uh, dictionary. And uh, Kung Fu, which is 
boxing. <laughs> so it had a lot of humor in it, and you had to kind of, uh, it was a double think kind of thing. You could not uh, take it in as what it seemed to you. You had to uh, kind of think a little bit deeper. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And you know what I, I would like to do? I'd like to hand out to the front row, I think I have enough, I didn't know how many people there'd be, for five for the front row, so just give it to five different people. Great. It's a six. And Oh, oh, no, I meant... Um, How do you want me to do it? Uh, that front row, this front row, and this front row. Okay. okay. Oh, wait. So. So they would get it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That front row. Okay. That front row. Okay. Do we, have, do we have them all now? Yeah, you have... Great. Uh, yeah. It's not enough. No, there, there's... You have it? Okay, great. All right. So, yes, uh, can you open the uh, envelopes? And you'll see an action in there. What does yours say? Laugh. Laugh. Okay. <laughs> Good. That's an easy one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, stretch. Right, right. Okay. So this is a little bit of butch <laughs> conduction. Uh, but before we do that, um, as you indicated, uh, I want everyone to stretch their arms up high. Just stretch. Try and reach that ceiling as high as you can. You doing it? Excellent. Oh, this is so exciting. Because I wish you guys could see yourselves. See, yeah. <laughs> really. The performance is already oh, there. Oh, it's fabulous. Oh, oh I don't a, even have a phone. Anybody have a phone? Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is extraordinary. Wait, yeah, don't get tired. Don't, don't get tired. Don't get tired. You can last. You yeah, can last. Because there's a whole room. It's so fabulous. A whole room of jazz Where's hands my phone? happening. <laughs> right. Ah. Oh. You got it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, don't hold give on. up. Don't hold give on. up. You can hold it. We can hold make on. it until dinner. Yes. <laughs> okay. You oh gosh. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you can, everyone stand up. And even though I can't do this part, I want everyone to shake their booties. Oh, no. Turn, oh, you want them to shake that way? I yeah. think they should shake this way so I can film them. Well, can we do both sides? Okay, sure. So do it from the front. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now turn around shake and do booty. it to us. Shake your booty. <laughs> shake your booty. Oh, my gosh. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You can have a seat. <laughs> Okay. That was great. Now you all became instant collaborators. <laughs> and you <laughs> And you all had to extend yourself beyond yourself that you unless you do that always. <laughs> you know, unless you go into a room and shake your booty. Okay, so I need to uh uh, hear from each person that has a card what that is, please. Rub. I'm sorry? Rub. Oh, good. Rub. Balance. Balance, excellent. Sparkle. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Sing. Ah, sing. Cheer. Cheer. Rhyme. Rhyme, okay. <laughs> Oh, move differently, yes. Repeat. Repeat, excellent. Re repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> Whisper. Be light. Be light. Laugh. Laugh, yes. Stretch. Stretch, right. Clap. Clap. 
Okay, so there were two balances, weren't there? Okay, so um, each person uh, behind all of these people, decide what you want to do. Uh, who would like to laugh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, who would like to balance? Excellent. Uh, whisper. Yes. Um, did I say laugh already? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, repeat. Now, with that repeat, I would say repeat emotion. Okay. Uh, sparkle, that's a difficult one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what was? Clap. Clap. Mm -hmm. Rub, excellent. Cheer, okay. So what I want you to do is um, I'll have someone start it. And those that are interested in doing that particular motion, stand up and do that. We'll do it for uh, a couple of counts. Okay, let's start with you. Where's the rub group? <laughs> uh, there's only, I know there were more than two. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> You don't know what you're missing at the people that did not do the rubbing. <laughs> That's self-love. <laughs> okay. All right? Balance. Balance. There's two balances. Oh, so many people want to balance. Oh. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Sparkle. Oh, she's sparkly. Okay. Oh. Sing. Sing. Where are all the singers? Where are all the singers? Happy birthday. <laughs> Dear somebody, it's got to be somebody's birthday. Okay, yours is so wonderful. Okay. Clap. Clap, okay. We can Clap. laugh. Clap. Clap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh. Which one? Rhyme. Rhyme. Ooh. Rhyme is time, is dime, is on our dime, is <laughs> anybody else? All the time, All the time rhyme, rhyme. It's good, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a toughie. <laughs> okay. Move differently. Everyone on her group move differently than you would normally move. Where's, where's the group? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh my gosh, the growth that is going on. <laughs> okay. Regina. Okay. Yes. 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 There you go. Where are the where's the repeaters? Where are the repeaters? Yeah, good, good. Yes, all right. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Oh. Ethel. Stretch. Well, we've done that. Yes. Yes, wonderful. 
All of our dancers are leaving. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> okay. This is a whisper. Whisper. A laugh, right? I have to be light. Be light or be like? Light. Light? Yeah. Be light, yeah. So light that we're floating above our chairs. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. This is laugh. <laughs> Again, was your movement? Stretch. Stretch. Okay, we've done stretch, did we? Okay, we'll just do it again, real quick. Okay. Now that's the way to end it, right? Yes. Now with uh, Butch Morris, he would have taken these and he would have uh, conducted them. That's why it was called conduction. And each time he'd do it, he would have a clue as to when he wants that person to do that particular thing, like the laugh or, or, or the stretch. And he would create a, a composition with that. And uh, it was really exciting because there was no way it could happen twice. It was always a fresh composition, a fresh piece of choreography. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen some examples, really, of what collaboration can do for the artist as well as the, uh, the audience that is involved. Yeah. I also want to just say that uh, one of the things that uh, Sangha and, and Marin and I share mm -hmm. is uh, utter bored, boredom being on a stage. Yes, so <laughs> true. That is so true. And, yeah. and a lot of that is, is that because you all must be bored shitless because there's absolutely <laughs> no way. <laughs> You're not as bored as we are. <laughs> uh, and so for a while now, for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. we've been trying to figure out when we've been together uh, how we could do it differently. Right. And we came up with a lot of wild and kind of crazy ideas to mm -hmm. to us doing a Zoom at one point, and we said, why don't we just flip our, our breast? Anyway, uh, <laughs> that just, was, just look, to change it up, just to change it up. That was Lorraine O'Grady. Oh, that was Lorraine, that's right, mm -hmm. Lorraine was on that cop. Yeah. Yes, yeah. she was yeah. on that. So anyway, all that is to say is that this one certainly is much more effective, I think. <laughs> Are you that for later? Uh, <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 man! Hi! Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, why don't you come up? Yeah, come on. Come on, come up. Come on up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we conjured you up because you were talking, we were talking so much about you. I know. My ears and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's so good hey. to see you. Oh, I'm so happy I got mm, here. Me too. Girl. <laughs> oh, we're oh, happy you got here. Yeah. Great. And Ava, my daughter, who's right there. Yeah. Have a seat. Join us. Um, yeah. Talking on the phone and texting me. 
like, oh my, do this, go there, don't do that, take mm -hmm. that off, do this. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, when it came down to it, I just got in a cab and he drove me right here. So, oh, from the station? No, from the, uh, Air, from the airport. airport. Okay. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Good. So did you, get to, did you see any of this that just happened? No. You what? just want you. Oh, I saw you doing, you know, mm -hmm. things. But <laughs> <laughs> it was just as I walked in. So we should do more things. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you're just getting started because you just got here. But we've been doing this for a while, <laughs> and, and you missed all the ones that you were into. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> we could go back. Yeah. No, 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 no. No. We don't want to bore anybody. Right? Uh, <laughs> and 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 you must understand that what Linda's talking about is that when you're asked to do something, uh, you have uh, an artist talk, and so you show your slides and you talk about your work, and it was just driving us crazy and it was so boring and I've been to art lectures and I can't take it halfway through. So that's why just to entertain myself and entertain ourselves, you know, we would come up with things to hopefully enliven the conversation. And also because it's more like making stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. Yeah. You know, art isn't really formal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The opposite. <laughs> so, uh, is there a question anyone would like to ask? Are we at that? Point? Oh, there's a question. Yeah, we're at that Linda. point. Okay, we're good. I'm noticing that um, there seems to be an interest in happenings, mm -hmm. if that's the right word. Yeah. How did y'all balance? the um, happenings with the need to document? Did y'all um, just limit the documentation to being viewed way in the future? Or how did y'all balance that, happenings and documentation? Well, uh, as Linda will let you know, I am a firm believer in documentation. Because when you're working with performance, when you're working <clears throat> in such an immediate way, that's the only record of having done it. It's sort of like uh, if a tree falls in the forest, uh, you know, is the sound there? Can you hear it? Or because no one's there to take in the sound, it doesn't exist. So documentation, documentation. I used to tell Linda, documentation, documentation, documentation. And we didn't have a dime. Right. That's so and true. And she would say, mm -hmm. documentation, <laughs> documentation. How are we going to document this? Documentation, mm -hmm. documentation. Uh, is Barbara McCullough here? No, OK. Well, um, and we genuinely, back in the day when there was film, we really didn't even have money for film. Oh, yeah. That was sad. Yeah. But it was true. <laughs> so, but we had to, to do it. We had to have a record that we exist because uh, in the larger realm, in the art realm, we did not exist. So we had to prove that we were there and prove what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it, so new and fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, I, I uh, tell the story in terms of uh, jam and the documentation that we have, largely because of Sanga. <laughs> it has to be documented, it has to be documented. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I tell the story about how back in, I believe it was like 76, 77, where Sony had come up with a half inch deck. So anybody knows video and decks? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and um, so anyway, um, and when they developed these, this half inch tape and deck with audio, um, uh, what they did was they, they gave it to, uh, in New York anyway, they gave it to the Met, they gave it to MoMA, they gave it to the Whitney, they gave it to Guggenheim, they gave it to those museums. And, uh, and asked the museums to give it to artists. And Randy Williams, who was an artist at JM, worked at the Met in the education department, and I had been a, a, an intern and a Rockefeller fellow at the Met. And Randy says, Linda, they have this video. Uh, I said, see if we can get it. 
And so we borrowed it, and the reason that we have as much documentation that we is as we do oh is God. because <laughs> we borrowed the Zo the Sony uh, and taught ourselves how to use the camera <laughs> and documented all the insane things that were going on at Jam. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, uh, <laughs> the person right she's there, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Marin Hassinger. Marin Hassinger. And yeah. Stop, stop. <laughs> this is the Senga Linda show. No, 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 this no, is the no, no. We come okay. together, girl. <laughs> um, we did have a lot of fun, and it was always very strange. Like, Sanka would ask you to do things, and you would do them, and it was like, what the hell am I doing? You know, what is this? And it was fun. You know, it was just great fun. Mm -hmm. And there were a few other collaborators, Ulysses Jenkins and Franklin, Franklin Parker, Parker and... You know. Oh, quickly, you see outside? Yeah. You the see the fall. leaves falling? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see them? Yeah, yeah. I saw them. Okay. Yeah. That is a Marin piece. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. She loves to deal with nature. So uh, it's kind of like I often say, I claim you art. So when I see something like that, I can immediately say, okay. That was an experience, and I claim that it is an art experience. And I can do that. In fact, we all can do it, but yeah. I, I do it. And that was Marin's piece. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad I didn't have to participate. <laughs> right? Unless you think I'm controlling the wind. No. no. <laughs> you know? That's a cute picture. Oh, yeah, that's me and Marin. <laughs> 35, a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. Yeah. Uh, we have room for one more question. I just have, you mentioned that art is not formal. Did you speak a little more that art is not formal? No, not when it comes down to it. It's just like a deep expression, I think. It's a, it's a way of expressing yourself. It's, it's like your language, the way you speak, and, you know. And um, it isn't formal. It isn't like something you learned and then learned how to apply. It's just basically dealing with space and materials and maybe people, other people who are going to see it or walk through it or, you know, or participate with it in some kind of way. But um, we learned formal things in school. For a long time, I was a school teacher. That's how I supported myself. I, I taught in college situations. And um, there was a formal way of teaching, you know, this is how you mix, you know, green, you know. Uh, or this is how you get something to stand up or hang on the wall or whatever. But ultimately, and I think, you know, like when you go to a museum and you see something that really attracts you and you can't quite put your finger on, like, oh, what is it about that? But I just, I really am drawn to that. I really like that. That really has meaning for me. That is beyond formality. You know, the artist might have known that if he mixed these colors together or, you know, filled up the space in a certain kind of way or said, oh, it's got to be small uh, canvas. It can't be a big canvas. Or it's got to be a gigantic canvas. Or like with Jackson Pollock. Oh, it's got to be gigantic. I got to put it on the floor. I got to like gravity take the paint, you know, all over the place, whatever. Um, those things are kind of formal, but that act of his to put something on the floor and run around like a maniac, that's hardly formal. <laughs> no, really, it isn't. But we're left with these beautiful, um, you know, maneuvers of a body in space and, and it's fantastic mm -hmm. you know it's real it's real you know it's not formal it's real there's a question over there hello hi there 
I feel I've come full circle because I know some of the people that you work with in LA. And um, I want to ask the question because people like John Otto Ridge. Uh, you kind of remind us, Marin Wright, of Frank Parker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I met you before this, the giraffe was at the zoo <laughs> with Houston Conwell. Oh, oh my. Oh, yes. But anyway, um, I know you went to Otis, right? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? Okay. No. Uh, Ulysses did, and um, John, David Hammonds. David, David and, I was going to yeah. say. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I was going to ask the question about how did, since you didn't, but how did those guys end up doing the things that they did since they were students of Charles White? Mm-hmm. You went to a different, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a teacher figurative, mm -hmm. but they went different directions. Yeah. By the way, my name is Albert Shaw. Yes, hi, hi. 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 And, well, and, and I, you it, know, um, David, I think, often talks about, uh, you know, he has a real reverence for Oh, and, oh without and John, a Yeah, and John. And John. Yeah, yeah and John. Uh, I think he so, gave them, you know, the heart of what art is, and they were able to take it out in their own way, their own languages, and so on. Um, he was a very influential teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles White, are you, any of you familiar with his drawings? And he is wonderful, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a real experience. Uh, so he gave them the heart and the courage to go again, in terms of collaboration, beyond themselves and beyond the as Mary was talking about, the formal. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So I think that's it, right? Any other? <laughs> I think you're eager. No. <laughs> did, you, did you make them all do some yeah. pantyhose stuff? Well, not no, not pantyhose. No, but there were dancers well, they did, here. Oh, the dancers did, did oh, pantyhose. Okay. They had nylon. Okay. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? It would be interesting mm -hmm. to figure out, like if if David, you know, was a product of his education, what would a student of Sangha uh, say? Ooh, right. that's a good question. Yeah, that is. I'm going to have to ask what's, the student what's beyond that. A, yes, right. Well, we all experienced you just now. Maybe we try mm -hmm. to answer it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For all, all of us who were in the room in the last hour, mm -hmm. uh, we were just students of Sangha. Mm -hmm. What kind of work do you think you'd make? Yes, after this. This is a test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will be great. <laughs> <I'll bring out laughs> the yeah. stops. Right. That's the teacher in you, Mara. <laughs> right. uh, I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> Mm. Oh, great. That's what I want. Oh, what? spontaneous. That's good. Oh, that's yeah. super good. Collaboration. Yes, that's right. That's really good, too. Uh-huh. I'd like to say, uh, I've known Sangha for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. I'm just amazed. My heart. <laughs> and I see it, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, yes, it's, yes, yeah. It, it is. <laughs> yeah, but we become family through that energy. That's yeah. why it's a family thing. Mm -hmm. That's how it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would you say you make art? Mm. Ooh. That's a good, really good question. Mm. And <laughs> does it have to be art? I didn't say that. Well, <laughs> I say that. I, that's my addition to that. <laughs> And does it have to be too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like uh, tending a garden, and, and you're seeing we're in spring, and you see all these little things coming up, and it's it's such a joy to see nature at work. You know, to uh, you pl plant something and you water it, and and then these things happen that almost have nothing to do with you. Whatever that thing is, it, it just starts showing itself, so to speak. And uh, Linda talked a lot about um, 
being bored. And that's part of it. You know, this is how I express myself. And I don't, you know, I want to do something, you know, that's interesting. I, I want to charge myself up. And, and art does that, you know. It, it allows you, uh, there's something in you that speaks through you. And I'm excited to see what that is because oftentimes someone will say, oh, what are you going to do for this show, especially a curator? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do for this show? And I said, I don't know. And they said, well, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I'm sure. And I'll be really excited to find out what it is. <laughs> and that is the God's truth. I really don't know. So I'm very... <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to see what I'll come up with. It's as much a charge to me as it is to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, I, I'd just like to add to that from a different way, um, which is, I, all of us are artists. Mm -hmm. We're the yeah. only species mm -hmm. that we know of today that have the, have the ability to imagine and transform what we imagine into mm -hmm. something tangible or something that others can perceive and experience. Mm -hmm. We are the only species that can do that, mm -hmm. based on scientific knowledge today. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't. Mm -hmm. I believe all of us are artists. I don't make that distinction. We're all artists. Mm -hmm. And whatever we're making, whatever we have imagined, because if you, and you know, your grandmother used to say this, or your grandfather, or whatever, the elders in the family used to say, whatever you put your mind to, you can do. The other way of saying mm -hmm. that is whatever you imagine you can make. Mm -hmm. And it's true, we really can, and we get socialized out of that. Uh, I wish all of us reconnected to our ability to do that. Mm -hmm. I think we'd all be in a healthier mm -hmm. world. Yes, I'd just like to say that. Um... Oh, sure. Uh, Sangha has made me see art very differently, you know, especially through the stocking sculptures. And as I was sitting here, I saw a man, probably a caretaker or a worker, pushing a cart across the top of that landing. And it had what looked like a lot of plastic, a lot of garbage oh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I said to myself, wow, look at that. And he was pushing it slowly. Ah, and I said, you know, that's art. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it was really, exactly. And it was so interesting, mm -hmm. you know, to just see it moving slowly. Mm -hmm. You saw him as a worker, mm -hmm. pushing it slowly mm -hmm. across, mm -hmm. trying to imagine what, what he was going through, what his day was right, like, right. and then to see the pile of stuff he had there it looked mm -hmm. like a sculpture, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. And that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, that is great. And, and see how it enlivened something happened just by framing it differently? All of a sudden, everything becomes really rich. Because like I was talking about Marin's piece, because I saw the leaves and everything. And, and Shelley was talking about that experience. Uh, I get chills because it just enlivens the moment. It enlivens your life when you can frame stuff differently. And you can actually frame it as opposed to letting that, that moment go by. Yeah. Yeah, framing is everything. Mm -hmm. One more. <laughs> you. <laughs> OK. Uh, hi, um, hi. I'm curious. Um, where do like objects or sculptures fall into this? Or are they similar to the stills, or are they evidence of a performance? Or I'm sorry, I didn't get the first part of that. Or how do like sc your sculptures or objects? How do they fit into your um, performances? And are they like a product of them? Mm -hmm. Are they like the evidence, like a still? Or mm -hmm. I'm curious. In your universe, is there? Uh, in my universe. <laughs> it is indeed yours. Yes. In our universe. <laughs> they play with each other. Uh, sometimes the, the, the uh, performances have artifacts, which are the sculptures. That would be like with the pantyhose. And sometimes, um, you know, they interact with each other. There's no, there's no distinguishing it sometimes. 
You know, they just fall in with each other in different ways. Yeah, sometimes it's artifacts, sometimes it's an actual sculpture that's a sculpture, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you get the idea to use nylon hose? <laughs> <laughs> it's an old, old story that I think a lot of people know anyway. And we'll make this the last part because we're losing people. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, I... Um, well, my two sons are present here, right behind you, Sansa and OG. <laughs> so, uh, it's our fault. Yes, it, it, it really is true. It is their fault, yes. Uh, I became pregnant uh, with, with Sansa, isn't that wild? <laughs> two grown ass men. And it, <laughs> I'm talking about them being babies, but uh, when I became pregnant with Sons, it was such a, a special experience that I wanted to somehow express it uh, through my art. And I tried a number of ways, and you know, to make a long story short, I came up with pantyhose that had the sense of, of uh, body. Uh, stretching and uh, changing, and I was doing a lot of stretching, and uh, you know, bigger and bigger. And then when I had him, uh, you know, well, the 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 body can be so resilient, but not totally. So I didn't go back totally to where I was, but uh, pretty much. And so. Uh, uh, that's how I came about it. I was just trying to find a way of expressing this phenomenal experience of having a human being in my body. And the hormones and all that kind of stuff, you, your body stretches and it's resilient and it goes back and forth. And then when I started filling it with sand, uh, I noticed that it gave the uh, sensuality and um, the form of the human body. And this, again, the weight of, of just putting sand uh, in the pantyhose created this sense of body. Is that true of the water compositions as well? Um, the water compositions, uh, I've always been interested in body and, and the sensuality of the body. And with water compositions, I was able to fill plastic uh, forms with water, and if you touch them again, you had this sense of you know sensuality in the body and, and movement and so on. And movement with all of these is very important. Singa Nagudi, we love you. Thank yeah. you for everything, you. Linda, Marin. Thank you all. Thanks everybody for being here. Come join us upstairs for the compendium launch and a little glass of champagne. You made it in time.